The question today is, has NASA brought back isolated and worked on alien organisms? To protect against any possible lunar contamination, the astronauts put on airtight special garments before coming aboard the rescue ship. They transferred directly from the helicopter to a mobile quarantine van in which they would be flown back to the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston, Texas. The Smithsonian Museum have the original Airstream decontamination caravan that Neil and Buzz and Mike were in after they landed. But the story behind the moon bugs is fascinating. The most extraordinary part of the Apollo 11 flight to the moon will start after they get back. A plastic tunnel will be sealed over the hatch of the spacecraft before they're allowed to open it. The beginning of the most rigorous three weeks quarantine any human beings have ever had to endure. The astronauts will clamber through into a 30 foot long travel trailer. Instead of red carpets and brass bands, they'll be greeted inside by a doctor and a technician. Volunteers who will remain shut in with them, risking infection from any moonbugs they may have caught. The rescue ship, having recovered the astronauts in the Pacific, will make full speed for the nearest land, probably Hawaii. And there the mobile trailer and its precious cargo, five men, 50 pounds of rock and soil from the moon, and the first films ever taken on the lunar surface will be swung ashore. It could take eight days before the travel trailer reaches its destination at Houston and is backed up against the airlock into the specially built lunar receiving laboratory. Inside that, another 13 scientists and technicians, more volunteers to share their exile, will be waiting. And at last, a glimpse of the outside world. For three weeks after the first moon landing, this is the nearest that the wives of Armstrong, Collins and Aldrin will get to their husbands. For the three astronauts will be hermetically sealed behind that plate glass, together with any bugs they've brought back from the moon, to make quite certain that they infect neither their wives and families, nor the rest of the world. It's cost five million pounds and over four years in time to develop this special moon laboratory, and the manager of it is Dr. Persa Bell. I gather the astronauts will have to occupy those chairs for many hours when they get back, Dr. Bell. Uh, I'm afraid so. The debriefing uh, officers will be in this room and they'll be there many hours of questions. What if one of them falls sick and needs an operation for appendicitis? Will that be possible? Oh yes. We have provided for many needed uh, emergencies of that sort. Uh, you know, a specialist can be brought in if one is required. We have a small operating room a dentist chair, uh, x-ray equipment, other uh, facilities for use back there if required. Not expecting it, of course. Well, uh, these seem to be extraordinary precautions. Do you think there really is any chance of bringing back bags from the moon? Well, no scientist expects uh, to find lunar organisms. Uh, it's an exceedingly unlikely event, indeed. One of my favorite books and turned into an amazing movie directed by Robert Wise is The Andromeda Strain. They were genuinely worried about contamination from extraterrestrial bugs. In a true biological crisis which our exploration of space could bring about, the present lunar receiving laboratory might prove inadequate. I therefore urge the establishment of a facility to deal specifically with an extraterrestrial form of life. Seems to me, General, Dr. Stone put one over on you. In fact, he made us all think his wildfire lab could handle any contamination from outer space. Isolate and identify. Good God. It's no accident. I suspect they were looking for the ultimate biological weapon. You can change everything. It turns out to be a real concern of NASA at the time that the astronauts would bring back an alien bug. Never believe this could really happen. Experiment with your own life, damn it! I'm scared. Oh, Lord, I'm scared. 
Also, all the moon rocks were held in quarantine. Have you actually seen somebody holding a moon rock? I haven't. In Apollo 11, man's first landing on the moon, there was no objective more important to science than the collection and return of samples of the lunar surface. For never before had we had the opportunity to examine extraterrestrial material from a positively known location and context. Within five days after the samples were picked up on the lunar surface, where they had lain for millions of years, they were delivered to the Lunar Receiving Laboratory at the Manned Spacecraft Center, Houston, Texas. The importance of the event was underscored by the presence of top NASA administrative officials. Inside special vacuum chambers and nitrogen-filled cabinets, decontamination measures were taken and the containers were opened. Samples were examined, described, photographed, and weighed. They were then prepared for preliminary physical and chemical analysis. Meanwhile, a number of Earth organisms were exposed to lunar material to assure that there were no pathological hazards. Among the organisms were plants, such as conifer seedlings, and tobacco tissue cultures. Invertebrate animals such as insects and shrimp and the almost microscopic paramecia and vertebrate animals such as the Japanese quail. And germ-free mice. In an intensive series of biological tests over a number of weeks, there have been no indications of pathological effects among any of the organisms. Because as we know, the truth is out there. Yeah.